Well, this morning, we're going to start things off, uh, and I want to share with you some of the behind the scene things that occur in the lab. And I want to show you what our vision for the future is, the direction that the company is taking over the next year, three years, five years, and even 10 years into the future. So you're going to get a peek inside the LifeWave Labs today. So let's go ahead to frame this properly. I want to take a few minutes and look back at where we started. It's really good to have some perspective as to uh, where we started, where we've been. I know a lot of you are new. You've only been in LifeWave maybe a few weeks, a few months. And uh, it's important for you to have this perspective so that when you see where it is that we're heading, you'll have a better frame of reference for it. So let's take a look back now. I started the company in 2002 and took two years to do clinical studies, set up manufacturing, um, look for how were we going to market this technology. And then in 2004, uh, we went to market with Energy Enhancer. That was our very first product. Now, that means last month was 20 years for me with this company. So, you know, sometimes uh, when we're getting leaders, new leaders that are coming in, it's like, well, how do I know, you know, you're not going to sell the business and, uh, you know, you're going to be a long-term opportunity. This is my life. This is who I am. And uh, I want to be doing this 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. Uh, but we got to reverse aging to do that, right? You know, so that's the whole point. Uh, but we had a phenomenal uh, start to the business with Energy Enhancer, and then we began uh, to introduce some new products, and this was all about improving lifestyle. So let's give people a natural way to improve their energy, relieve their pain, and have them get a better night's sleep. That was all the initial few years with the company. Then, as I began to work with the technology and develop new things, I found out one of the really cool things that you could do is cause the body, signal it with light, to cause the synthesis of peptides. Now, this is incredibly important because it means it opens up, potentially, thousands of different applications for the patch technology. Uh, but we started with things that were very simple, very simple peptides. Glutathione is a tripeptide, carnosine is a dipeptide, Eon elevates a peptide in the liver uh, that produces a relaxation response in the nervous system. So now we had moved into the generation of our company where it was all about anti-aging. So we know that lifespan, is correlated to your glutathione levels for very good reasons. Uh, carnosine, this is maybe one of the most underrated nutrients out there. Uh, we showed in our clinical studies that carnosine would improve cognitive function, improve strength and stamina, uh, it supports the health of the heart. And in separate studies, carnosine has been shown to protect the telomeres. So in studies that are done with mammals, uh, with mice and rats, you get a 30 to 40% increase in lifespan. And in those rodent studies, the animals never age until the very end of their life. So we have a very practical example uh, going back to research in the early 2000s of how supplementing with a simple nutrient can have an enormous impact on quality of life and also extend life. So that was how we got into anti-aging. Of course, there was a 10-year period where we were doing a tremendous amount of research. We generated 80 patents now in the field of stem cells and regeneration. These patents are all over the world. 
and we introduced in 2018 X39. So we entered the stem cell industry. So this is very important, right? Because being able to have technology that will support faster healing is a very, very important part of age reversal. Meaning, we don't want to end up in a situation 20 years from now uh, where somebody gets into an accident and they have severe injuries and they can't recover, right? So it's not going to do any good to have technology that keeps us young for a very long period of time if we don't have technology that helps us heal faster, right? So <clears throat> this is a very, very important part of that overall picture. And the other thing about X39, probably the most important part, for the sake of marketing, we're focusing on stem cell activity. But actually, the power of copper peptide is that it resets about one-third of the human genome to a younger, healthier state. There was research that was done at Harvard, and we have a video, actually, that we're going to play on this later, where they took uh, thousands of peptides and they screened them for anti-aging effects, and GHKCU was right at the top in terms of one of the most powerful molecules for being able to have a healthy effect on gene expression. So actually, when we were getting into the stem cell industry, this was our first step into age reversal. So this is why you see some of these testimonials that people use the product for a few months and they look much, much younger. It's because physically, their gene expression, their epigenetics are changing, being flipped to a more youthful state, this is making the stem cells more active, and this is what can uh, mobilize these stem cells and increase the number of stem cells in the body, supporting healing. So that's what it looked like back then. Where do we go from here? And what type of technology are we developing in our lab to make age reversal a reality? Now, an important part of this uh, so we have a frame of reference, is that age reversal is something that is definitely mainstream today. If we went back 20 years, age reversal was still in the realm of science fiction. Right? Mainstream scientists thought, well, we're born, we age, we die, and that's a one-way street, and there's really nothing we can do about that. And interestingly, uh, scientists did not discuss things like parabiosis, meaning if you take the blood from someone that's young and you give it to someone older, that older person starts to experience some of the things that we see in someone younger. So there's factors that are in the blood that can make the cells act like younger, healthier cells. So eventually, these concepts were accepted and today, uh, there are billions of dollars being spent by huge institutions and companies to deliver products like drugs to the market that can reverse human aging. So this is going to be a theme now uh, that we're going to continue to see, and it's a reality in, in our lifetime. So another important frame of reference is that nature already has species that have defeated aging. And this is so important because it means that we don't have to violate the laws of nature. Mankind has an awful history about creating technology that violates the laws of nature, right? Most of you got here in an automobile. I would say an engine in an automobile does not comply with the laws of nature. It doesn't violate physics, okay? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, why would we create engines that are 17% efficient, throw most of the excess energy out into the environment as heat, and pollute our planet in the process? Where... I'll have more on that later. Um, 
just as a thought. And, you know, even worse, we're taking carbon that's in the ground and we're putting it into the atmosphere. That's a pretty bad idea. When nature does things, it does things incredibly efficient and also in harmony with the planet. And uh, this is what we want to do. We want to have in our generation technology that is in harmony with the planet. So in looking at this, uh, the type of things that we'll study are lobsters, ants, planaria, hydroctinia. Uh, we look at organisms that either do not age at all or who have in some way defeated the aging process. So one of the species uh, that I've studied is a uh, temnothorax ant. And in ants, what's so interesting is that the queen ant can live five to six times longer than the worker ant, yet their genetics are almost identical. So what is the reason for this? Bees are very similar. And the queen bee is going to live 50 to 60 times longer than a worker. So we should be able to determine what those differences are, since they're very, very minor, and we should be able to uh, implement that with human beings. So, you know, imagine if we did moderately well, and we could extend human life five to six times. I think most of us would be pretty happy with a lifespan of five or six hundred years, right? <laughs> and not aging in the process. Now, what's interesting about the temnothorax ants, so we got these ants into our lab and we wanted to start a series of experiments which were successful. And uh, what's interesting about this ant is that it can get infected by a parasite which will change its gene expression and the mechanism of action is known. Uh, the parasite will, in order to survive, will upregulate mitochondrial function in the ant and this flips the gene expression in the ant so it doesn't age. So here we have a very good model that supports the idea that if we uh, enhance the function of the mitochondria, we can extend human life. And that's at least the hope, right? And it's, again, it's not anything trivial. We're talking about not 20 or 30 percent improvement, but five to six time increase in lifespan. So the big question is, could it work in human beings? Do we have any other examples that we could look at uh, to say, yeah, this, this might be possible? Well, of course, first example that we'll use, and uh, a man that uh, I think should win a Nobel Prize is Dr. Lauren Picard. Dr. Picard has put in 50 years uh, to doing clinical studies into GHKCU. So the great body of knowledge that we have today as to how this peptide works and the effects on the human body are because of the work that Dr. Picard did. And it's a shame that he's gone unrecognized, uh, but it's very fortunate for us uh, that we have a product that benefits from this and uh, we really have the only effective product in the world for elevating copper peptide. Um, the second example of this that goes back to the 90s, very simple. Uh, this is the combination of an amino acid, acetyl L-carnitine, with an antioxidant, alpha-lipoic acid. And it was discovered by Dr. Ames uh, that if you gave these, put these nutrients into solution in a culture of older cells, those older cells would start to behave like younger, healthier cells, and no surprise, it was because these nutrients have a beneficial effect on mitochondrial function. Now, oxytocin is known as the hormone of love or of bonding. And so people that are in loving relationships have naturally elevated levels of oxytocin. And... Um, a very important thing about oxytocin is that it has a significant impact on aging. Namely, you can create a culture, in this case, of muscle tissue, 
and expose it to a solution of oxytocin, and the muscle tissue will revert to younger, healthier tissue. So here we have a very powerful example for you men that aren't in loving relationships. <laughs> Stop playing around. Commit to your significant other. Get into a loving relationship. <clears throat> As an alternative, somebody could invent a product that elevates oxytocin. <laughs> um, it yet remains to be seen if that will happen. Hint. Um, we, of course, have uh, David Sinclair uh, and uh, his main focus and the focus at uh, Harvard and Stanford is on elevating a NAD. Of course, NAD is a powerful energy-carrying molecule in the mitochondria. And again, it's been shown that when you uh, use this molecule, it can improve mitochondrial function and have a beneficial effect on gene expression. There's a few points uh, where I would disagree with some of the outcomes uh, of what they think will happen with this, but nevertheless, um, I'm, I'm not downplaying the importance of NAD. And then I mentioned parabiosis. And <clears throat> there's any number of different peptides in the blood that can have an effect in terms of uh, regenerating the cells. GDF-11 is one of them. There's growth hormone, testosterone, there's many others. Uh, but what was interesting is that when companies started to go to market to uh, harvest the blood from people that were young and healthy so that people that were older that had the money could buy that young blood and benefit from it, uh, the FDA came in and said, no, we don't want you doing that. It, it's odd to me, given that blood donations happen all the time, so why would the FDA not want people to be young and healthy? I'll let you draw your own conclusions. <laughs> okay, so these examples show us that aging is not inevitable. There are things that we can do to alter the way that we age and hopefully reach our goal of staying young and healthy as long as we want, and if we're older, reverse the aging process and recapture our youth. So, have we seen any evidence of this in anything that we've done? As a matter of fact, we have. So, the first thing um, we'll talk about is telomere research, uh, and we have worked with a very well-known medical doctor. Uh, we've done this work over a three-year period of time, uh, we use a test from a company called Repeat Diagnostics, which clinically uh, is considered a gold standard for telomere testing. Uh, we've worked now with over 50 people in these tests over these years, and uh, we found some pretty extraordinary things. Oh, let me go back. There we go. Uh, we found that consistently uh, we could lengthen the telomeres and if you're interested in doing this, you take a baseline and then you take another measurement at six months. We tried doing blood draws at three months and we didn't see any change, but when you had a minimum of six months, that's where you began to see the telomere uh, lengthening. And then, the, again, there were effects at one year out. So we did these studies with blood draws at baseline, six months and uh, 12 months. And we found that in as little as six months, we could get enough telomere lengthening to equivalate, that's equivalent of eight and a half years of age reversal. So this is a very significant impact. Um, the other thing about this is that there are many different factors when it comes to aging. So telomeres, lengthening them, can protect our health uh, they can increase the number of times that our cells divide, meaning we can increase our lifespan, but we need to do other things. We need to get rid of the uh, cells that are dead, that hang around, that cause oxidative inflammatory stress. We need to manage inflammatory stress. Um, 
we need to have a healthy diet, we need to exercise. So there's many things that we need to do uh, if we're going to defeat aging. But certainly telomere lengthening is an incredibly uh, important part. Now, we have uh, now about a year and a half worth of research into this device that I invented called the Biomimetic Enhancer, and I'm on generation five of this. Uh, the first one was just to see if the technology would work, and then the second one uh, was intended to be a device used on human beings, and it actually turned out that it was too strong. Uh, you couldn't use it for more than 10 minutes because it placed too much stress on the body because of the effect. And uh, basically, this is a new form of light therapy. So this is different than the patches. This is different than a cold laser. And uh, it provides light therapy in a very interesting way. Uh, the backstory of this is that when I was doing uh, my studies on ants and on lobsters, my thinking was everyone's looking at the biochemistry, but we know that it's the biophysics the bioelectrical system and the biomagnetic fields in the body control the biochemistry. So I started to create a model to look at what were the biophysics involved in lobsters and ants, were there any commonalities, and could we figure out which wavelengths of light were going to be responsible for preventing uh, these lobsters and ants from aging. By the way, lobsters have been found to be 132 years old and never have aged in the process. Uh, do we have any Marvel fans here? <laughs> we got a few Marvel fans? Okay. You know how, well, maybe you don't know, but Asgardians, right, like Thor and Odin, they actually get stronger as they age. So the lobsters are the Asgardians of Earth, right? They actually get stronger as they age. They actually become more sexually active as they age, too, as it turns out. So if you're wondering whether or not you have to give up sex when you're two or three hundred years old, the good answer is you'll be more sexually active then than you are today. Uh, it probably explains why Noah was having kids at 550 years old, right? Okay. So uh, this device is intended to be a piece of technology that is biomimetic, it's meaning we're copying a process in nature, putting it into a piece of technology. And uh, we did a number of pilot studies with this uh, on the first generation, uh, sorry, the uh, second generation, the third generation, and now we're up to number five. And we wanted to see what would happen in these tests. And there were a number of things that occurred that are very, very difficult to explain. For example, the pH of the blood in the test subjects went from about 7.6 to 9.8 in only 10 minutes. But yet, it did that uh, without any change in the uh, dissolved solids, meaning potassium is going to be the most powerful regulator of uh, pH that was discovered at Oxford. So when you're taking, when you're eating vegetables that are high in potassium, the alkalinity is actually coming from potassium, right? And so somehow this technology was able to increase the pH without changing the amount of electrolytes in the body. And we don't know how that's possible yet. Uh, so for example, I see a medical use of this, and I can say this because we're not selling the tech. Um, I see a medical use for this is that we know that cancer cells reproduce anaerobically, and as a result, uh, they produce lactic acid through their metabolism. And so I want to look at a medical application for this where you take somebody that says has lung cancer, cancer in the thyroid, you hold this device over the tumor and allow it to dissolve the tumor with light. Um, so that's where I think something like this could go. Um, the other thing that it showed, which was really weird, it was creating some kind of energy field around the body that shows there's an immediate decrease in fat and increase in muscle. Um, so we don't know why the equipment would show that. Uh, and when we measure aging, 
we want to look at the total, uh, one of the measures that we want to look at is the size of the cell. So in other words, the electrical potential of the cell is optimum when we're young and healthy. And then about age 25, the fibroblasts begin to decrease production of collagen, and uh, collagen is what holds the cells together. It's called the cytoskeleton, and the most abundant protein in the body, of course, is collagen. So what that means is that after the age of 25, we're aging, the collagen production is going down, the cell is shrinking, that inhibits the ability of the cells to hold water, and the electrical charge around the cell decreases, and as the cells divide, this reduces the amount of energy transfer that occurs in a back EMF over uh, to the new cells being created. What this simply means is that if we can expand the cells and get them back into a more youthful state, that is a very important part of age reversal. And we found that this device would equate to about a three-year reversal in age in about 10 minutes. Um, so why aren't we using it now? Uh, the reason is because having an alkalinity in your blood of 9.8 all the time is not a good thing and uh, is going to overstress the cell. So, part of, so we know the tech works. Uh, now it's a matter of refining it. And um, I think we're getting there very, very nicely. Okay. Um, I have a few different pieces of equipment uh, that we use. Two pieces of equipment that I use quite regularly are a biopulsar and a Menla scan. And uh, a biopulsar is like an EEG for the organs in the body. So in real time, we can see the elect bioelectrical activity in different regions in the brain, um, in the heart, the liver, the kidneys. And then it can take all of that data and distill it down into a graph, which I'll show you, a visual image. So this would be a baseline reading that's normal. 30 seconds after applying the biomimetic enhancer, we see an increase in the energy field. And then 90 seconds after application, we see a further increase in the energy field around the body. So in other words, the changes that we saw through the blood and urine analysis uh, matched up to the bioelectrical readings. Very powerful effect very quickly. Now, we want to create a LifeWave lifestyle. So when you wake up in the morning, you're drinking water, and you should be drinking water now because it's a great way to help manage weight, clear toxins out, and give your body the water that it needs to produce energy, but wouldn't it be great if we could drink water that reversed the aging process? So, okay, so how are we gonna do this? Um, you might recognize this as ice. And uh, so I wanna do some experiments that is just a mark on there so I know it's normal ice. Uh, but we did some experiments and in our lab, we created a machine that restructures water in an entirely new way. So this is not alkaline water. It's not clustered water. This is something entirely different. Um, I contacted, I mentioned that I contacted a friend of mine who's a scientist that specializes in analyzing water. He's a physicist and he's analyzed 200 different types of water. And I sent him what I'm about to show you, and I said, well, you know, what do you think about this? And he said, I have never seen anything like this before. I'm really excited to get involved with this project. So, what we want to do with this, the whole goal was to put energy into water so that when you drink it, it releases that energy into the body and triggers a regenerative effect. So on the left is regular ice, on the right is the bottom of the beaker, and you'll notice all of these crystal formations, and in the center is an implosion. 
So normally with ice, it expands as it freezes. And this water doesn't behave that way. It actually implodes. And some really unusual things happen. That was one of the first samples that I made. And you can clearly see an energy vortex that's frozen in the center. So what's going on here is that as the water freezes, the energy is released and it implodes and forms this vortex pattern. By changing the settings on the equipment, interestingly enough, we can get different effects. And this is good because, as we know, each organ in the body, different cells have their own resonant frequency. So this means we can create custom water that goes to your heart. Water that goes to your brain. Water that goes over to your liver. And so on and so forth. I don't think they're making those yet, so we might have a market for that, right? Oh, I'm good, Renata. Thank you. Um, okay, here's another uh, view of this, so you can get a uh, different view from it. And um, so this has been highly repeatable. It wasn't an accident. Uh, sometimes when we change the settings, we still get an implosion, but we get these other beautiful crystal formations uh, that happen. That's another uh, experiment that we did. Again, showing an implosion, but just slightly modifying the settings. Okay, I have to prepare you for this one because this one's really weird. Um, I changed the settings on the equipment and then I would open the freezer door. At that time, today we have a freezer door that has a glass front, so we do time-lapse photos, uh, which we're going to put on our social media, by the way, and um, so you can see what this water looks like as it freezes. I have some pictures to show you today. Um, but in the original uh, start of this, I would open up the freezer door and look inside. And on this particular day, as the water was freezing, what I saw was this snake-like formation rising out of the water. Uh, so when you have one of these machines, you can do these tests yourself, uh, <laughs> if you so dare. Uh, there's just another view of it. Uh, but you can see there's clearly some energy in this water because water doesn't usually take the shape of triangles and snakes. Um, the other thing that it did, which was really odd, as it began to freeze, the snake laid down, and you can see it formed this cylinder right on top of the water. So uh, that was kind of odd. Uh, I hope none of you are eating potato chips, right? They're not really very healthy. Well, apparently we found we could make water potato chips with this. Um, so we found the water could rise out of solution and form these weird potato chip structures. And there's another view of it. So there's clearly energy in the water and it's being released. Sometimes it forms fish scales uh, if you change the settings. And again, these beautiful triangular patterns. Uh, so the water again will implode, but it freezes into different shapes depending on what you're doing with it. So this is going to be something uh, that will happen in the future. And another thing that we found with it is that when you drink this water, the energy goes right to the head uh, in, w in one of them. And I'm going to show you now what I did with colloidal gold. And so we began to do some experiments other than just water. So I said, let's do uh, some metal colloid experiments since uh, metals can conduct electricity in the body. And of course, this is uh, what colloidal gold looks like. And as it starts to freeze, notice what happens. So I'm planning to take these beakers and hang them from my Christmas tree and have some beautiful <laughs> ornaments. That was my first thought. But then as it kept going, the ball began to shrink. Then after three hours and 45 minutes, it's imploding. Four hours, it's still imploding. And then four hours and 15 minutes, it disappears. So there's some very unusual phenomena that occurred. And by the way, since then, since unfreezing the water and cutting into it, 
the uh, colloid actually, uh, when it gets small enough, it comes out of solution. So you find uh, gold right at the center of that bubble. Um, this is just another example of what the colloidal gold looks like when it goes through freezing. Okay, another thing that we're going to do uh, with this company is develop technology to build the business, but the products we release are intended to benefit the planet. And um, not that we're not benefiting the planet now, but we're going to develop products that do this in a very different way. So. The type of things, you know, of course, that we're concerned about is, as we all know, prices of gasoline are increasing. Uh, we won't have access to fossil fuels in the near future because they all want us driving electric cars that are going to be recharged by nuclear power plants. Uh, so, you know, we're going from global warming to putting more nuclear waste in the ground, and uh, I personally am opposed to that and have a better solution. Um, <laughs> And um, I don't know about any of you, but I think Bill Gates has enough money, and uh, he's the one funding these new nuclear power plants, and so I think that's got to stop. Um, and we want to do this in such a way uh, that we can have a business model, clean up the planet, do something that's environmentally friendly, do something that is consistent with how nature would do it. So you're going to see that tomorrow. Okay? <laughs>